And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, today I'm going to be talking about the new version of Pandemic. This is the original version. The new version looks more exciting and is available in quite a few different places. Uh, so uh, um, what I'm going to be doing for this, if you've never played Pandemic before, well then you're in for a treat because it's a fantastic game. And I'm going to show you how to play the game as if you've never played it before. Let's take a look. The board of Pandemic here shows uh, the, a map of the world, and on this map are different cities. Uh, they picked random large cities, uh, and each of these cities across the world is one of four different colors because there's four different types of diseases that will start in those areas. And you can make up the name of the diseases yourself, but the, you know, you'll probably end up calling them yellow, blue, black, and red diseases as they move across the world. Uh, nine of these cities are seeded with a disease. You'll draw cards from this deck and you'll put three cubes in three cities, two cubes in two cities, and one cube. I mean, two cubes in th one, three cities, and one cube in three cities. And then all your folks start in Atlanta along with a research station. Each person is given a roll card, and these roll cards are used to give you a special ability during the course of the game. Each player is also given a small hand of cards from this pile. Each of these cards either shows one of the cities on the board or might show an event that allows you to do something special during the course of the game. On a player's turn, they have four actions. They will get to draw two cards and then they will progress the disease. Now your actions are pretty simple. You can always move from one spot on the board to another spot on the board. You just move around. You can also, if you have a card in your hand, for, for example, Mumbai, you can discard that card and move your pawn directly there. So that allows you to move across the board quickly. If you happen to be in Mumbai when you play that card, then you, then you can go anywhere you want. You can also use an action to get rid of a cube on the board as you get rid of uh, the different diseases. It's a way to keep the disease in check. You can also fly from one of these research stations to any other research station on the board. And let's see, you can also build another research station. If I'm in Mumbai and I have the Mumbai card, I can discard this to build another research station there. If I'm in the same city as another player and I have that particular city card in my hand, I can give that card to that player. But the biggest thing of all, and this is how you win the game, is if you are in a city that has a research station and you get rid of five cards that are the same color, then you have cured that disease. So when you cure a disease, we'll take the color token here of that type and put it down here. That disease is now cured. From now on, whenever you cure a cube of that disease's color, you'll get rid of all the cubes of that color when you go to that city. And if you manage to get rid of all the cubes of that color off the map and have cured that disease, then you have eradicated it and it will never show up again. Now, each person at the end of their turn is going to check the infection rate. The infection rate here for an easy game starts at two. You can start it higher if you want to. But what that means is you're gonna turn over the top two cards of the deck here. If it was at two, if it's at three or four, you draw the top four. And we'll add a color cube to each of those. So this to Shanghai and Taipei, I'm gonna add a cube to each of those, a red cube since those are red cities. Now, if I ha ever draw a card, of a city that has three red cubes. Let's say for Jakarta here, I draw a card for Jakarta. I don't add a fourth cube there. Instead, I put a red cube in every city that's attached to it. This is called an outbreak. If I would go to another city, let's say Ho Chi Minh City also has three cubes, then that would cause another outbreak as uh, cubes would spawn from there. And so you can see that you can have a chain reaction. Each outbreak you do, causes the outbreak token over here 
to go down one. And if you get to eight outbreaks, then you have lost the game. So you have to be careful in that regard. Now, the player deck here is full of many good cards. Special effect cards that you can play any time, and city cards that you can use, you know, to do different things in a game. But you're also going to be seeding the deck with epidemic cards. You'll put four in for the basic game, and you'll add six in for a game of insanity. You can add five in for, you know, I guess a game of halfway in between. When a player draws one of these, instead of getting two good cards, they'll get one, bad, one good card in this card. This first increases the infection rate, and then secondly, the bottom card from the deck comes out, and we add three cubes to that city on the map, and then you're going to take all the cards of these cities that have been drawn so far, shuffle them, and put them back on top of the deck. That means cities that have already been infected will likely see a resurgence of infection. So it's very dangerous when that happens. And then, uh, so th <laughs> there's nothing good about an epidemic card. And when they show up, they make the game that much harder because as your infection rate goes up over here, you're going to be drawing more cards. The cities will be back on top of the deck. So, you can lose this game if your outbreaks get to eight. You lose the game if you go through the whole player deck and run out of cards. And you lose the game if you need to put some color cubes on the board and you cannot do so. Well, that's all well and good, but how do you win the game? You win the game by curing all four diseases. You do not have to eradicate them. You simply have to cure them. Now, in case everything sounds you know, pretty horrible, these cards do allow people to do special abilities. For example, the researcher can cure a disease with four cards instead of five. And since you have a hand limit of seven, that's a pretty big deal. The quarantine specialist, which was not in the original game, whenever she's in a city and all, all that's the city, that city, and all the cities connected to it, do not get a cube while she's there. The medic, a very helpful guy, when he gets rid of a cube in a city, for his action, he gets rid of all the cubes. And when a disease has been cured, if he simply moves to the city, it gets rid of all the cubes. The dispatcher, not very useful in a two-player game, but you can move another person's pawn, and you can move one pawn to a, a spot where there is another pawn. So that's handy. The operations expert can build a research station for f an action for free, and he can move from a research station to any city. All he has to do is get rid of any city card. The scientist, oh, I'm sorry, the scientist is the one who only needs four cards to discover a cure. The researcher is a person who can give a city card to another player on their turn. It doesn't have to be the city that you're in. And then the contingency player, which is the another new one that wasn't in the original game, you can take any discarded event card, put it there, and then you can play that card and remove it from the game. So basically, he can let you play all the event cards twice. And the event cards can be very useful. They can make it so that you don't draw any infection cards. They let you move anywhere on the board. There are many different event cards, and they will help you possibly win the game. So there you go. Many ways to lose, one way to win. First of all, before we uh, go into my thoughts on the game, uh, for those of you who've not, who already have the first edition, what is this at? Well, it has those clear cubes, as you can see. Those are pretty nice. The, the, everything looks a little nicer. Problem is, it's not technically compatible with the first expansion for Pandemic, but they will be coming out with an expansion for this. This is a nicer version. My only quibble with this one is the box is still very small, and it's very difficult to fit everything in the box once you get the expansion. Uh, for now, everything fits in here. So, no big deal, I suppose. Uh, the Pandemic itself, folks. Pandemic, if you've not played it, is one of the best cooperative games ever designed. It is fantastic. It is a theme in which everybody can get behind. Everybody wants to cure disease and stop diseases from destroying the world. Uh, so you, you'll be able to work with this. The, it has a very high tense level factor to the game. Uh, I like that this one adds a couple extra rules than the original game had because that gives some more variety. So there will be some roles that you really will miss when they're not your game. The scientist, the medic in particular, I really hate when I don't have those in a game. And some roles do not seem as good as the others, like the dispatcher and the, um, you know, the dispatch doesn't seem like he's that useful, but can be very helpful to move other players to where they need to get to go. Pandemic has gotten a rap over time that an alpha gamer, a gamer who tells everybody else what to do, can basically control the game. And there is that, that is a possibility in Pandemic, but I think that even if you have you know, worries about that issue, I would still try to play the game because it is a very exciting one. 
Pandemic on the easy level is beatable, okay? Once you know what you're doing, you will beat the easy level most of the time. But even then, it will still sometimes slap you around just based on how the card draws come out. On the hardest level, when you play with all six Outbreak cards, it is very difficult. You can win it, but it is very difficult and doesn't happen all the time. Uh, I like that. I like that the game is a challenge to win. You will find that most often than not, at least I found, that the thing that gets you the most is that deck running out. You simply run out of time. And containing the diseases doesn't help out enough. But because there's three different ways to lose, that that is just you're always watching everything. You gotta stop the outbreaks. You gotta move and go to the spots where there's three cubes and get rid of one of those cubes. You gotta send people to the right spots all over the thing. You have to decide whether you're gonna use cards or whether you're going to save those cards to try to cure disease. There's a lot of neat things here uh, in this game and it is, like I said, one of the best cooperative games in the market and you should certainly try it out. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at Dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com. <laughs> Shut the door! Yeah. Yeah.